Coming up, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan is not seeking re-election. What are his reasons for his decision and what does this mean for lawmakers on Capitol Hill? And President Trump threatens missile strikes against the Syrian government after a chemical attack killed dozens of citizens. And two famous YouTubers will be speaking to students right behind me here in Gifford Auditorium. Citrus TV News starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Two popular travel vloggers from YouTube are headlining a lecture tonight here at Syracuse University. Good evening, I'm Connor Federico. And I'm Rebecca Castor. Damon and Joe are a YouTube duo traveling the world with the goal of teaching their viewers how to travel cheaply. The two create videos in English, French, and Portuguese each week and have created the brand Shut Up and Go to encourage people to travel. The Francophone Society here on campus is teaming up with Damon and Joe to present a lecture on their travel and YouTube vlogging. Citrus TV reporter Greg Bradbury is outside of HBC where the event will be taking place tonight to, dis to tell us what they will be discussing. Well, right behind me here in the HBC Gifford Auditorium, Damon and Joe will be coming to speak to students across campus. Among the topics they'll be discussing include the role foreign language include, it involves in their job and as well as travel. Students I've talked to are super excited about attending tonight's event and many have been following their YouTube channel for years. The event kicks off tonight at 7.30, however, tickets will be required to enter. You had to get a ticket from the Shine box office or from your foreign language teacher if you're required to attend. However, the tickets were free. Earlier today, Citrus TV's Domenico Oriana sat down with Damon and Joe in studio to discuss their early beginnings as well as how they were able to build a business and a brand. Take a listen. Like, which advice will you give to students to become entrepreneurs with social media? Ooh. That's what we're also going to be talking about tonight because yes. we've learned the good, the bad, and the ugly. The thing about what, what's happening now in the internet and the digital industry, there's no playbook. There's no like career.com. There's nothing like that to really give you the basis of how much you should charge for social media posts, how to find a manager. Do you even need you know, anybody to help you? And we learn everything from how to do our taxes to how much a tweet should cost for a brand deal on our own. It was really trial and error. So the advice would be, don't be afraid to start. You have to start somewhere. We started and we definitely got, you know, gypped on a lot of the gigs that we did in the beginning. And it takes those mistakes to get you to, you know, in a, a more advanced position. So we really took our lifestyle. We learned how to make videos to show how we were doing it, entertain while we're doing it, and teaching people how, you know, to see the world. I think that it gives you the curiosity, like, you'll go to Paris and you may like Paris, you may not like Paris, but the curiosity that you're gonna have after your trip to wanna explore new places, to wanna speak a new language or meet new people from other countries, I think that's what, what's life changing about what we do. Full interview with Damon and Joe at CitrusTV.com or on our Citrus TV YouTube and Twitter accounts. Syracuse University is increasing the financial aid available to students in light of the tuition increase earlier last month. The Financial Aid Office will distribute $264 million in aid. This is a 6.5% increase from last year. In March, the university announced a 3.9% increase in tuition as a part of Invest Syracuse. And the nationwide event Hackathon is coming to Syracuse University for the first time in the program's history. Hackathon is a 24-hour contest where students compete to build applications, websites, and hardware projects. The university is nicknaming it Cuse Hacks, and it will take place on April 21st and 22nd in the Life Science Complex. Student association elections are underway. Citrus TV reporter David Edelstein sat down with two candidates on the ballot. Student association voting began on Monday and ends tomorrow. Two candidates on the ballot. Gufran Sali, a sophomore information management and technology major from Dallas, Texas, for president. And Kyle Rosenblum, a sophomore psychology major from Limerick, Pennsylvania, for VP. We just started talking about all these things we want to see changed, and we're like, let's do this. They're running on five themes. Diversity and inclusion, health and wellness, community engagement, transparency and the administration, and the unwritten theme. The unwritten theme, a chance for students to share their thoughts for the essay agenda. Because there's over 15,000 people on this campus. That's so many live times and perspectives that we don't understand. And it's good to open up that line of communication between the students and 
Student Association. While Salih has not held an SA position before, Rosenblum currently serves on the Health and Wellness Subcommittee. He says it has motivated him to do even more. I've seen how much Student Association can accomplish, and I've just been inspired that, to utilize that platform to make an impact on campus. Of course, you're not the only candidates running. What makes you two different? With um, my experience in the, the Student Association subcommittee, we have that kind of basic foundation of knowledge about how student association functions, but because neither of us have ever served in the assembly, we still have that outsider perspective. Their slogan is, why not now? Why not get elected now as sophomores if they have the motivation? And why not make the changes students want to see now? David Edelstein, Citrus TV News. Tune into Citrus TV live at 6 tomorrow to see our report on presidential candidate Caitlin Elswig and vice president candidate Ryan Hawk. Grab your swimsuits, Onondaga Lake may be swimmable in the near future. An over $30,000 study is expected to start this spring to see where a beach could be built on the lake and how much it would cost. This comes after a 2015 report that said two-thirds of the lake was clean enough for swimming. A Rochester judge has been charged with a felony after she attempted to buy a shotgun during her probation. Latisa Astacioa tried to buy a gun at Dick's Sporting Goods when the clerk reported her to authorities. She is currently on probation for her drunk driving conviction in 2016. Astacioa responded to the charges and said it was her sister who wanted the gun. A woman in Albany has been charged with making a terrorist threat and harassing social services staff members. Vaughn McAdoo allegedly threatened employees of the Albany County Department of Social Services by telling them she was come, going to come and shoot everyone there. She has previously made multiple threatening phone calls. She is currently in the county correctional facility without bail. Well, Rebecca, there's been plenty of snow flurries here and there this week, but nothing like we saw last week. Yeah, well, that snow still will still snow still be hitting the grounds later this week. We're going to go to weather anchor Jessica Torricelli, who's outside. I'm out here by University Ave, and you can see it's a little bit windy right now, about 10 to 15 miles per hour, making it feel about 40 degrees from 47. There's a little bit of sunshine right now and there's some partly cloudy skies which we might see some rain later on tonight. I'll tell you if we can see any rain, snow, or any other severe weather conditions coming up in my full weather forecast across the break. Thanks Jessica. Coming up, why Speaker of the House Paul Ryan won't be seeking re-election in the 2018 midterms. And what action is President Trump taking after this week's chemical attack in Syria? Find out after the break. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. If you see news happening on campus, 
Syracuse or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan is not seeking re-election to the U.S. House of Representatives this fall. Ryan served as the House Speaker from the end of the Obama administration to now. The House Speaker says he likes to think that he has done his part. President Trump tweeted that Ryan will leave a legacy of achievement that nobody can question. Ryan will retire the position after this year. He maintains he reluctantly became the House Speaker in 2015. I did not seek this job. I took it reluctantly. Uh, but I have given this job everything that I have. And I have no regrets whatsoever for having accepted this responsibility. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg continued his testimony today before Congress, this time in front of the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Zuckerberg says that he and Facebook leadership didn't adequately defend users' data against a breach from British data firm Cambridge Analytica. Zuckerberg added that the data breach included his own personal data. It's clear now that we didn't do enough to prevent these tools from being used for harm as well. And that goes for fake news, foreign interference in elections, and hate speech, as well as developers and data privacy. And Arizona teachers are joining a national trend, walking out in demand of better teaching conditions. Teachers across the state participated in marches and rallies before school hours this morning. The Arizona Educators United Coalition is calling for state lawmakers to mandate 20% pay raises for teachers starting next year. Teachers in Kentucky and Oklahoma are also protesting for better pay. President Trump says missiles will be coming in response to Syria's suspected chemical attack last week. Russia's ambassador to Lebanon said any missiles fired at Syria would be shot down and the launch sites targeted. Trump did not outline what a U.S. strike would look like, nor whether American missiles would be used. U.S. officials have been in contact with foreign allies about a possible joint military response. And thousands of South Africans gathered to mourn the death of anti-apartheid activist Winnie Mandela, the ex-wife of civil rights activist Nelson Mandela. The two-hour memorial service took place at a soccer stadium, Soweto, a suburban of Johannesburg. As one of its most important fighters against racial discrimination, Woody Mandela was often called the mother of the nation. She was 81 years old. An Algerian military plane transported soldiers and their families crashed in a field after takeoff today, killing 257 people. The crash is Algeria's worst plane disaster ever. An investigation is currently ongoing in an effort to determine the cause of the crash. Algerian media says five people are in a critical state, but it's unclear whether they were inside the plane when it crashed. This is the first crash of an Algerian military plane since February 2014. And coming up, pink Kit Kat bars? We'll tell you how Nestle is adding a sweet treat flavor to their lineup. And the Bank of America will stop lending to weapons companies. Why they're making this change after the break. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. 
saw snow yesterday and over the weekend as well, but look at the snowmaker right here. That's winter storm Xanto that's going to be hitting the northeast come tomorrow morning and throughout this coming weekend. So we might be seeing some extra snow flurries. We're not quite done with snow yet. Sorry, spring is not quite here. But then looking here, another spot of severe weather throughout the nation. There were tornadoes in Florida and you can see from space, you can see those storm cells starting up here. And then here's some damage from a house in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It also went through the airport there and overturned some carts, but no planes were damaged severely in that tornado. Again, we see some water here, pretty heavy damage for tornadoes in Fort Lauderdale. Current conditions right now, we see a lot of rain, a little bit of spotty snow throughout central New York. Not too much snow to be on the radar until this weekend though for us anyway. Going to our current conditions right now, about 40 degrees, 48. It was 47 here, but with that wind chill, 40 degrees it felt like because 15 mile per hour winds gets a bit chilly over time. And our forecast for tomorrow morning, rain, because we're going to see some rain on the front part of this winter storm. So before we see that snow, we'll be seeing a lot of rain. Throughout most of the day, it'll be really rainy, not too much of a chance of seeing any nice skies or sun. Going to be in the 50s, though, not too cold. And then looking at our full five-day forecast here, you can see a lot of rain on that screen. And so pretty much every day we have a chance of rain above 50%, so would bring a rain jacket, but maybe not seeing so much snow come until Tuesday or Wednesday. That's your full forecast. Thanks, Jessica. Good news for chocolate fans in the United Kingdom. The new Ruby Kit Kat will be coming to shelves next week. The color is from the pink cocoa beans and is being called the Sublime Ruby Candy. The taste is explained as fruity and fresh, but we don't have to worry here in the United States, Nestle says it will be available in the U.S. and other parts of Europe in the near future. And Bank of America will no longer lend to companies that make military-style weapons. The Bank of America vice chair says the bank wants to contribute in any way to reduce these mass shootings. The vice chair added that the bank does some business with a handful of gun makers, but do not intend to finance or underwrite the weapons. Bank of America joined Citigroup in creating new company policy based on guns. And in an interview today, Mariah Carey says that she suffers from bipolar disorder. The singer told People magazine that she lived in denial and isolation and in fear of exposure. Carey says she was diagnosed in 2001 following a breakdown. She said the singer says she is now in therapy and recovering with the aid of medicine. Carey says she went public because she is comfortable where she is now. Well, if all you want for Christmas is a Central New York showdown in college lacrosse, you're going to be obsessed with sports today. Syracuse and Cornell, they just belong together. Yesterday was one sweet day for them to play, but was it a heartbreaker for the Orange? We'll tell you on the other side. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day, I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. Party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. And now, 
your Citrus TV Sports Report. Welcome back. I'm Drew Carter. Let's start with a pop quiz. Where does the best college lacrosse player in the country go to school? You're probably thinking of a powerhouse like Johns Hopkins or Duke or maybe even Syracuse, but the answer might actually be Cornell. Jeff Teat is leading the nation in points per game. He's got the Big Red on the fringe of the top 10. And last night, Syracuse got a look at those Big Red up close and personal on a three-game win streak. Are the Cuse thanks in large part to that man, Don Madonna. He's been sensational lately, but he had to face the number one scoring offense in the country. And early on, Cornell looked like it. Two goals in the first five minutes. But SU can strike fast, too. That's Brendan Bomberry with his 100th career point, tying it up at two about five minutes in. But it's more of the same, though, in the second quarter from Cornell's offense. Clark Peterson bearing it off an assist from that superstar. Jeff Teat, no goals for the next 13 minutes. But right before the break, Donville finding Jake McCulloch, and it's a 7-3 Big Red lead heading to the locker room. Second half, just 37 seconds in, Connor Fletcher buries it past Madonna over his right shoulder. Syracuse goes more than 22 minutes without a goal. This will help from Steven Rafis early on in the fourth, and the Cuse on the comeback trail. Then it's David Lipka, rips one home past the goaltender for Cornell, and now it's a four-goal lead for the Big Red. But Jeff Teat, we talked about him, might be the best player in the country. That might be the dagger. Upper left 90 past Madonna. He did save nine shots in this one, but Cornell takes that five-goal lead right back. Here's your nail in the coffin from Jordan Dowiak. Your final score from Ithaca, Cornell 13, Syracuse 8, and SU head coach John Desco knows it's hard to beat good teams, especially when you don't have the ball. You know, I thought we were a little hurried in the in the in the first half. That I, don't, I didn't see the face-off stats, but I'm, I'm sure they won the face-offs, uh, and it gave their offense, you know, the possession so many times after after goals. So I think lack of uh, having the ball, and I thought we were I thought we were a little hurried, and then you throw in, uh, you know, throwing those saves that their goalie had in the first half, uh, you know, probably frustrated us a little bit. Now, it's not every year that you could say Cornell is a tougher matchup than North Carolina, but the Big Red have won five straight, and the Tar Heels have dropped six in a row. Syracuse is back in the Dome on Saturday to host UNC. Syracuse softball is looking to bounce back today in Albany. It is SU and Siena in a doubleheader this afternoon. The Q's coming off a three-game sweep in South Bend against Notre Dame. So far, so good today. The Orange took game one, six to three, thanks in large part to Gabby Tehran. It was tied at two in the fifth. Then the freshman cranked a two-run homer to put her team ahead for good. It's Tehran's third dinger of the season. The rest of the team has one combined. Now in game two, Siena comes right back with a 10-4 win over Syracuse, and the Orange splits that pair out in Albany. Now it's the last night of the NBA regular season in the NBA and the race for the title of the best team in New York is coming down to the wire. The Nets and Knicks both own the stellar record of 28 and 53. Each team hits the road tonight and they both play contenders in the East. Brooklyn takes on Boston, which is locked into the two seed. But get this, the Nets are actually favored by a couple of points. No Kyrie Irving for the Celtics. Now, meanwhile, New York meets LeBron and the Cavs. They clinch the three seed if they win and the 76ers lose to the Bucks. And on the diamond, the Yankees and Mets both play divisional foes tonight. The Bronx Bombers got embarrassed by the Red Sox last night. 14 to 1 was the final score from Fenway. That was the ninth straight win for Boston. Pushed the Sox lead in the AL East to four and a half games already. Tonight, David Price gets the ball for Boston. Masahiro Tanaka starts for New York. The only team hotter than the Red Sox may be the Mets. They're also 9 and 1 with a current win streak of 7. Game 2 against the Marlins tonight with Zach Wheeler making his first start of the season for New York. But guys, for me, Big matchup today in the NBA. I'm a Timberwolves fan. I'm from Minnesota. I've got the Wolves tie on today against the Nuggets. It's win or go home. Yeah, Drew, I couldn't be more excited that the Knicks season is coming to an <laughs> end, but the T-Wolves and the Nuggets, break that break that one down for us. I like Minnesota in this one I'm sure for you two do. reasons. Yeah. One, I'm a huge homer. Okay. And two, Jimmy Butler is back in a big way for the Timberwolves. He is the veteran leader this team needed. I think the Wolves take it and go to the playoffs for the first time since Kevin Garnett. Wow. Wow, big guess. But let's take it back to Syracuse men's lacrosse. So their loss against Cornell, what does it mean for the team? Now, it's not huge, I don't think, because you're on the road against a team that's right on the borderline of the top 10. Coming up against a game in a game against North Carolina, who won the national championship a few years ago. Don't let that six-game losing streak fool you. That's a tough team. Syracuse has to bounce back. And in baseball, Drew, the Yankees, like you said, a big loss against the Red yeah. Sox. The Red Sox are really good, and surprisingly, the Mets are the best team in New York right now. The Mets have been scorching hot to open up this season. Most people thought the Nationals would take that division in really a landslide, but the Mets have come back with a vengeance. Nine and one and against the Marlins should be another easy win tonight. All right. Thank you so much, Drew. We'll be right back after the break. Don't go away. See, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. 
Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pellet wait? Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because it played with cat dribbling all over it. Where the cats go on vacation? New York. <laughs> Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. So that's your full five-day forecast right there. And rain in pretty much every day. I mean, p.m. rain for Saturday, morning rain on Friday and Sunday. But Thursday and Monday, we're going to see rain throughout pretty much most of the day. Temperatures in the 50s, maybe lower 40s, and at night we get down to some 30s, so we could be seeing ice or maybe even snow conditions. So Jessica, you said we have quite a bit of rain this week, mm -hmm. so when can we expect to see flurries? Should we, when's the next time we're gonna actually see some snow? So this winter storm, um, Zento, might be coming uh, to hit us over the weekend, so we might see some flurries that might change our forecast a little bit as the projections get closer, but right now we just have a lot of rain, but maybe as it gets towards nighttime, we could see some flurries Wow. Well, I have the question that our viewers want the answer to. When is the next time we're going to be seeing some spring? That is a question I kind of don't have an answer to. I'm oh, thinking, no. you know, maybe in the next few weeks, hopefully by May at least. Uh, really, really don't have much hope here, though. I think we'll be seeing snow into May. Wow. Shocked. I know. Right, thank you, Jess. And if you're a fan of the new Fox series, New Girl, then you might have spotted a small cameo in the show's premiere of the seventh season. That's right, Otto the Orange, SU's favorite mascot, makes an appearance in the form of a pillow pet in a character's apartment. Schmidt, one of the main characters on the program, is known to be a Syracuse grad who studied communications in the Newhouse School. This is the show's final season. It's been on the air since 2011. You know, I'm a big fan of the look of Otto in that one. I haven't seen that auto pillow pet before. I would really, really like one of those. You know, I always get so excited whenever I see something about Syracuse in a TV show. Another TV show, popular show that's done this before, has had a, a character go to Syracuse is One Tree Hill. They actually had one of the main characters go to school here, and then he actually becomes a sports broadcaster on the show. Interesting. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I'm a big fan of Sophia Bush in One Tree Hill, big fan of Zoe De Chanel in New Girl, so I guess you throw Otto in there, and I'm just a big, bigger fan of the shows now. Yeah, and it's, I can't believe this is New Girl's last season. It's had such a great run. Um, really great show, one of my favorite shows. All right. Well, that's all, for, that's all we have for tonight. Make sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube at Citrus TV News. From all of us at Citrus TV, I'm Rebecca Castor. And I'm Connor Federico. Thanks for watching, and have a good night, Syracuse.